All right, so I'm going to be going over how you can use Circle CI in your projects. So this is going to be a three part series. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can use it with React. Tomorrow's video, I'm going to show you how you can use it with your backend or your server. And then for the third video, we're going to go over how you can do this in a mono repo setup. Now, before we dive in, I kind of just let you know what Circle CI is. It is a continuous integration software or website. Um, basically what you use it for is you can run tests or any kind of uh, scripts before you actually deploy your code to production. So what happens is usually you're going to push your code up to some kind of provider like GitHub, then CircleCI is going to grab that code um, and then it's going to be able to from that build the code so you may need to compile it if it's a TypeScript code or you might need to run Webpack build on it. You'll get some kind of output. Um, and maybe before you even do that, you test your code, make sure it's good. And you may have it, some kind of intermediate steps that you wanna run just before to test to make sure everything is working or whatnot. And then after that, it goes ahead and deploys it. So basically it's gonna deploy it from your source on GitHub. So we're gonna take a look at how you can actually do this. Now I am using Circle CI. For pretty much two reasons. One, they have a nice pricing. Uh, they have a free version that you can use, um, and you get a hundred or a thousand free minutes for building on infinite repos. Uh, so that is pretty nice. Um, and then secondly, it's a pretty popular choice for uh, containers or Circle CI. You see very often in uh, repos, so it's a good one to know. Uh, and if you're looking for other kind of providers. Uh, this sort of thing, I think GitLab is another good option to go with. But I pr mostly pu push my code up to GitHub, um, so Circle CI works well with that. So that's what we're going to be looking at. So what I want to start with is I'm basically going to show you how to take a React application and basically run tests on it and then deploy that. And we're going to be deploying that to Netlify, but pretty much the same principles apply deploying this to wherever you want to deploy your website to. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So pretty much the first thing you need to do is create a GitHub repo. That's what we're going to be using to push our code up to Git. So I have my code here, and basically this is just a create React app application. Didn't add anything else. If we look at the source code of this, we can see we have just a really basic test right here uh, that comes with the default create React app. Um, and so after that, what we're going to do um, is create a project in CircleCI. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and make a Circle CI account uh, if you don't already. And then when you're in there, you're gonna, I have, I'm connected with my GitHub account. You're gonna to wanna to do the same thing. That way you can see the repositories that you have. Uh, so if we click on this add project uh, button right here, uh, we can go over here and we can see all our projects. You can search them. So I clicked on my Circle CI React project and I clicked set up project on it. Now I already set it up so it says unfollow project here. Uh, but if it's your first time, it looks like this. So I'm just going to click on this to show you what it looks like. All right, so you'll get a screen that kind of looks like this. And then you push the language that you want. In our case, we're going to be using Node. Um, and then if you scroll down to the bottom, they're going to give you a sample config. And you can just copy the sample config. Um, and so what you're going to do after that is go into your JavaScript project or your React project. You're going to create a Circle CI folder. Uh, and inside of that, you're going to create a config.yaml file. And also note there is a period in front of the circle CI. So dot circle CI and inside config.yaml. Now from the base config, the only thing I changed was uh, I added a later version of Node. I usually use the latest version of Node, uh, but when I tried the latest version of Node, it had a little bug with Jest, so I downgraded one less version. Uh, but anyway, what you'll notice about what this config looks like uh, this first bit right here is where we define any Docker images that we need. And we're going to get more in depth about where Docker is really handy uh, in tomorrow's video where we can add things like Postgres and Redis um, if we need to use some other things besides just Node to test our code. Uh, I don't really, I keep the default working directory. You'll notice this, the steps is uh, basically what we need, what we want CircleCI to do. So it first checks out our code from GitHub. Uh, what it does here is this is uh, caching dependencies, so we're running yarn install. Uh, I guess, I don't know if they want us to change it to a uh, yarn lock. Uh, this is just the default they had, and they had a yarn install here, so I'm going to keep it. But anyway, this is basically this little bit right here 
is to handle caching of yarn. I don't really usually make any changes to this. I just keep the default uh, to, of that. Uh, and then here you'll notice after that, so basically what's gonna happen is it checks out your code from GitHub and installs the dependencies. Either it gets it from the cache or just runs yarn install. Um, and then there's basically three things that I have going on here. So I'm building the code and then we, I'm calling this command called Netlify deploy. So uh, these two I added. So after my tests run, this is where I want to build the code and then deploy the code. Uh, and so this is where you can do whatever kind of stuff you want to do before you deploy your code. So this assumes the tests pass. If they don't pass, we'll see an error on CircleCI, which we'll see in a minute. So this is basically, we're telling CircleCI how to run our code to test whether it works and what to do when we push the code there. Uh, so it's gonna test it, it's gonna build it, it's gonna deploy it to CircleCI. Uh, but again, we can have whatever we want commands here. Basically, all you do is you say run and then whatever bash command you want to happen with it. You may wanna version your code, do something. We're gonna get more advanced in the next videos and add more steps, but this is very basic. So uh, let's look at what this Netlify deploy is because this is a custom script I added. Build is just a Webpack command to build it. If we look, this is just React Scripts build. That's just gonna basically bundle our code. Uh, and then this Netlify deploy is something I added. So this is something where I wanna deploy my code to Netlify. So this is how I'm doing it. So you'll notice I am saying Netlify deploy and I'm specifying a directory here. Uh, this is just the build directory. Dash P says it's production, go ahead and deploy it. And then at the end here, I added a dash M flag. Dash M means a message. Uh, and you'll notice I just escaped it with uh, uh, quotations here. That's why that escape. Uh, and then this little bit here, this just gets the most recent git message. So basically just grab the commit message from the last commit to display on Netlify. Uh, this part's definitely totally optional. You could remove it if you want. I just like having it there so I can see the commit that uh, th that Netlify did or is deployed with. I also added Netlify CLI as a dev dependency, that way this works. So I just did yarn add Netlify CLI for that. Uh, and that's pretty much all the changes that you need for uh, your local React application. So after that, you just say git push origin master and push up your code to GitHub and everything is up to date now. Um, so after that, you're going to just click start building and it's going to go ahead and try building your code. Now it's going to have a problem because the end, you could just comment out this part too. You could comment out this part where we deploy it to Netlify if you want to just run these two bits when you uh, push it at first because the Netlify command is going to fail. We're going to have to specify our credentials for this to get it to work, which we're going to look at in just a second. Uh, but if you run this, you're just going to see the test run uh, in a building. But anyway, that's what happens when you push it up. And if we click on uh, workflows over here, we can see what's going on. So if I come over here, I already have the tab open. So you can see all the different repos. So I am using this for Saffron, and here's the example repo that I made. Uh, and you can see I have, looks like one running. Uh, so, oh, dude, this looks like I did like an infinite loop on it or something been running for 15 minutes no that looks like just a ui bug <laughs> okay it finished 15 minutes ago anyways this is what a successful build looks like we're going to come back to that in a second what i want to show you is here's my first commit that i did that's super basic i think did it just run and test yep so i just ran the test and it looks like this so for each command you can click on it and you can see what happened with it in this case it passed uh, this is where you'll notice the next. So every time you push, what's going to happen, it's going to run that workflow. So I pushed, made some changes, um, and you'll notice these two failed. And if we look at this workflow, uh, you can see why it failed. So this is what it looks like when your tests failed. So this is what I was talking about when I was using the latest version of Node. Uh, I got this error about could not read symbol property, so I just downgraded. All right, so we're going to fix that Netlify problem now. So uh, let's go ahead, and first thing you need to do is actually create a site on Netlify. So I already create a site, mine's called Friendly Joliet, or I don't even know what that is. Um, and then, so what you need to do is you need to connect Netlify to your GitHub repo. So in my case, it was CircleCI React. Uh, and then the thing with uh, Netlify is it, you usually push your code to GitHub and then that deploys it to Netlify. I don't know if there's a more elegant solution to this, um, but I don't want Netlify to deploy 
whenever I push my code up to GitHub because I want CircleCI to do that. Because CircleCI is only going to push my code up to Netlify if the tests uh, pass. So you notice like when this happens, uh, it just crashes. It's not going to run any command after that, um, so, which is good. So if our tests fail, we don't want it to deploy our code. Uh, so what that means is I just created a dummy branch um, on the repo. So I just said uh, dummy, you can say dummy two, and I create a branch for it. Uh, and so when I create a branch, I just went to my Netlify site and I went to deploy context. So this is in uh, settings, build and deploy. And then under the deploy context, edit settings, I just set it to this dummy branch. And I said, don't deploy on any other branches. So this dummy branch, I'm just not going to deploy to. And so Netlify is never going to be deployed from my GitHub repo. It's only going to be deployed to when I push it from CircleCI. Um, so we need to tell CircleCI that I want it to deploy this particular site because you can have multiple sites on uh, Netlify. So the way we do this is twofold. So we first need to give it two environment variable keys. So if we go to workflows tab and we click on the cog, there's a whole bunch of settings. The thing we care about is this environment variables. So we're going to add environment variables. I've already added them. So the first thing is a Netlify auth token. This basically allows it to log into your Netlify account. So be careful with this. This is a secret. Uh, to create that, you go to app.netlify.com slash account slash applications, and you just create a new access token. Uh, and that'll give you a code that you just paste in over here. So you just paste that in and give it the name of Netlify auth token. Then the other thing you need to do is pass in the site ID. So this is to tell Net Netlify, hey, I want to deploy friendly guy over here. So if you go to your uh, settings general, you'll see uh, the API ID. So this is the ID of the website that you want to be deployed so that you can copy that um, and again, give it the environment variable. So basically these are two environment variables that the Netlify CLI uses. So when we run Netlify deploy, it knows to look for those and that's how it credentials for you. Anyway, after you added that, uh, you can go ahead and push your code up to GitHub. Um, or again, if you didn't make any changes, you can just rerun and it'll just run it again. Uh, I'm just gonna cancel this. I don't even know what to do with it. This looks like it's just like a visual bug. There we go, it does say success there. So you can hit rerun here, or you can make a change to your code and push it back up if you wanna see it deploy. Uh, and again, here's what the successful deploy looks like. So we can see that the tests ran, the tests pass, and then we can see a yarn build. We can see it generated the Webpack bundle, and then it deployed up to Netlify, uh, and I can see that jazz here. So again, you can see all the output from what you did. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much how you can go about deploying this to Netlify from CircleCI. And again, basically the flow of this is we push our, our code up to GitHub. It's going to run the tests for the code. If it passes, uh, it's going to then build and deploy it. If it does not, it's going to error out and we can see that and we can go change it uh, for that. Uh, so that's it for this video, guys. And the next one, we're going to be looking at how we can take this same approach with a server application.